what's going on everybody and welcome to studio time this is the fourth episode i'm so happy uh for this episode um i got my, my guest here or not my guest my co-host uh yeah. mr justin speck what's going on man how you doing pretty good i'm uh happy happy to be here excited about this episode so let's get into it <laughs> all right all right um normally i do I, I do a little little intro a little short chit chat but i want to get right into it because i'm very excited about this guest uh this is one of my 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 closest friends one of my longest friends um i've, I've known i've known this guy uh since i was like 11 years old i was <laughs> i was 11 he was 10 something like that um but he is a a fantastic writer um uh a very very good actor um and a, and a, a director as well he he created the the web series upstairs um of which i had the pleasure of doing the theme song uh which was it, it was phenomenal uh, but we're gonna get into it um and he also uh did the the wonderful science fiction short film upload um if you haven't seen that out uh go check that out i'll leave that in the show notes um once i am done with this episode but uh like i said very close friend of mine very very talented uh young individual very 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 intelligent um i guess i could i could go on and on but uh we're gonna get right into it mr jonathan l jackson what is going on sir how you doing hey i'm sorry but that was phenomenal like <laughs> like i've never i've never seen like how that happens <laughs> like, like, like with the intro and and the setup, this is great. Hey, this, I'm excited. Hey, it, it, hey, it make you want to do one now, right? <laughs> no, it may, no. It makes me, me want to clap harder for the people who are doing it. Was, this is because we I'm we trying, had still, we had, we had I'm a short still, talk. We I'm had we had a short behind. talk about a uh, podcast. I'm still behind. I'm trying to figure out how we went from this place to that. Listen, this is great. <laughs> <laughs> Normally, I have a longer intro, but I, I was I, I, like I said, I, I was so excited to to get this episode started. Uh, I, I've been I had this in my head for a long time, but we were finally able to uh, coordinate it. So I'm really happy to have you here, man. Man, I am so proud of you. Like, <laughs> I, I've never, like you know, in my world, like in that TV film world, there are people who do this for us, and we kind of mm -hmm. show up. And it's like this, I, mm -hmm. but you're doing it all. Like you did it. I'm this. I'm this is not part of the podcast episode. But hey, give me a second, y'all. I've never seen this part of the project. <laughs> <laughs> like, every time I show up to something like this, it's like I just either show up and this is already happening, or yeah. um, I just click the link and I'm logged in and I'm in, and that's it. Mm -hmm. I like the whole. I, yo, this is dope. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm saying that too because I feel like everybody with a who thinks they're cool and sounds cool, they want to start a podcast. But you clearly have put some real some real work and talent that's going into this for for you all to to do this. Like that's cool. Like, hey, listen, bro this this episode ain't about me. It's about you. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I, I think I thank you. I thank you for the kind words, but it, it, it's about you, man. I wasn't prepared. Oh, I'm, I'm showing you off. I was, I was not prepared. This is too cool for me. <laughs> As I mentioned before, you are a, a uh, writer, actor, and director. Um, but today, or at least right now, we're going to get into all of it. But right now, I want to get into um, how you, how, how did you get your start, man? We're like, what, what, tell, tell me the origin story of Jonathan L. Jackson. Oh, man, like. Well, it started, I was born in the hospital in Met no, I'm just kidding. Listen. <laughs> <laughs> no, but as a as a as an artist, there's a couple of things. Like the first thing I will say is that um when you're a kid, your parents tell you all the right things. And mm -hmm. there's something that happens around the age of 10, 11, 12, especially getting into 13, where the parents' rhetoric starts to change. Mm -hmm. And for me, it just never happened. Like I had the audacity to believe when parents tell their five-year-olds, you can be the president, you can be an astronaut, you can do this. I kind of have always intrinsically, like genuinely believed 
that I could do those things. I never mm-hmm. knew how, I never knew where or whatever, but like I, I always believed that it was possible. Um, so it kind of, for me, it starts with the audacity to believe all those things that when your parents tell you you could be an astronaut or whatever, which was big when I was growing up. I don't know if parents tell their kids you could be a TikToker now. I don't know what they say. <laughs> not, I hope not. <laughs> But it's like that. I, I really be, just believe that. But the funny thing is, my career is low key. Like I feel like we all think we're in charge of our lives, and some people mm-hmm. you still believe that. I'm not trying to challenge your personal theology. I'm just telling you my journey. My my career has been a a serendipitous line of happy accidents, mm-hmm. like literally things where if one thing goes differently, if I'm if I come through the door one second later, this whole thread falls apart. So for me, I think my life has been, to me, my life has been designed. What you call that designer is up to you. I call mm-hmm. it God. Um, because for me, the how I got into performing arts, I, I was playing football at uh, what is known as like a national powerhouse. I was playing football at Glenville. And, hey, um, Glenville. I started to realize that I was low key trash, like not trash. But like, <laughs> I wasn't like, I think my, if I was a superhero, my superpower is self-awareness. That's my, <laughs> I, would just, like, I would be like Batman to be like, we can take Superman. I'd be like, I don't know. Like, hold up. <laughs> I don't know about that. Slow your roll. <laughs> like, I, know my powers. I know his, I'm just saying like, I don't know. <laughs> I didn't have, I was very self-aware. Like you get next to guys that, you know, I played with probably four or five guys that end up going to the NFL. So Mm -hmm. like I learned, I was watching them and I'm like, yo, I don't have that. I don't know what that is. I thought I was, (laughs) when I showed up, I thought I was good. And I think then there are people like the Kobe Bryant's who are like, I'm going to get him. I'm going to catch him. I'm going to be better. That was not me. I was like, okay, I need to figure something else out because this is not, the, the move for me. And, um, <laughs> so I stopped playing football because I wanted to, I realized at that age, I think I was uh, 16. I had never done anything else. The only mm-hmm. thing I had ever committed to in my life was football. So I said, well, okay, well, what can I do? Um, and I didn't know I was lost. Honestly, I was lost. <clears throat> I started going to church and that started to give me some fulfillment in life. Mm-hmm. And then, um, me and my parents kind of had a little falling out about it because my dad had like a life plan for me. Like he like, no, if you stick with it, maybe you're not this guy, but you can you can do this. You can do. I mean, like I wasn't I wasn't trash. Maybe I'm over exaggerating. I was pretty good. You know, I had won some championships and stuff like that in different. Mm-hmm. I, re- I remember that. I remember you, you and uh, you and Kevin uh, talk, talking about y'all games. Yeah. Like we, we was. Do- I mean, I was. all right, <laughs> But again, I wasn't that. You know what I mean? Like Mm -hmm. I'm talking, I played next to first round draft picks. I wasn't that. Um, So for me, the reality was what can I do? And I didn't know. I spent a lot of time lost. And then I had a buddy named Jimmy who would give me rides Mm because the RTA, the we call her Auntie Rita, the public transit system. (laughs) Awful, especially in the winter. So, Man, that's <laughs> like, a Cle- like a winter bus ride in Cleveland. It, I mean, it's, it's brutal. Not, it's brutal. It's a it's a hike. No, and don't 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 get on no old bus because th- this new generation that they got all these new buses and they, they yep. warm and they function and they don't break <laughs> down. <laughs> they got two sides to them. Like it's like a, a middle squishy <laughs> part to buses now. Like yeah, we was coming up the buses that they ain't had no shocks. Like <laughs> it was just a bad situation. You 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 remember you remember the orange and brown buses? Come on, man. <laughs> Come on, man. The whole bus looked that those buses used to look like what ha- what comes out of the McDonald's uh, frost <laughs> machine when they closing when they closing the store. Like the buses was, right when they tell you it's broke. <laughs> like <that's laughs> those buses look like. And we, so my buddy gives me a ride and he's like, Hey, is it cool if I make a stop? And I'm thinking to myself, I'm not driving, like, you know, make a stop. We make a stop at this, uh, at John Hay high school where they're, where they have housed the all city arts program. Yeah. So I, remember that. I walk into this, this building, there's <clears throat> choir, there's dance, there's all this stuff happening. 
And me as a football player, I start like making fun of the people because this is a joke. Like the closest I've seen to this is fame. Like I never heard of any of this. I'm like, yo, these mm-hmm. people wild. I'm like, they they really taking this serious. So mm-hmm. I'm in the hall making a joke. Actually, I'm in the hall with Stefan Johnson, SJ voiceover. <laughs> oh wow. Like, like, That's my guy. That's my friend. <laughs> Kids, you not like me and him are in the hall, and because we are the only two people who could do bass at this age. Uh huh. And um, Mr. Sias, who ran the program, is walking past as you know. John uh, Stefan goes into he goes into the room. I'm standing out there. He walks past, and Mr. Sias walk up to me. He goes, "La boy," and I'm like, "Me?" He's like, "Yeah, la boy. What, what, what are you doing this weekend?" I'm like, uh, I'm thinking I'm about to get in trouble, like a Saturday detention or something. I don't even know. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know. And he's like, I have a show this Saturday and I lost some singers. Can you come sing? And I'm like, yeah, never sang before in my life. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like, yeah, if you, if you ask, hey, why not? Right. That's what I'm thinking. So I go in there. We do, we okay. long story sh- like why well, I made it long, but we go in there, we do the show, and I sang. I had a solo. I sang "Ain't No Mountain High Enough," um, and I had the solo, and I sang, or I guess it was a duet technically with Shandra Ray Turner, Shandra Ray, the uh, singer, and I sang mm-hmm. the whole song in the wrong key, but I had so much fun. Like I had, <laughs> it was it was so much fun, and I was. I was, they, it got me. I was bit it by got the, bug. the bug. The bug bit you. Yeah. Oh, it got me. And from that point on, I just started performing, doing more and more stuff. And the next thing I knew, I did Dream Girls. And Dream Girls was so big in the city. Like they put me in the paper. Like I had never made the paper for being a good football player. Like yeah. <laughs> I, I, was never, I was never the player of the week in the county, none of that. Like, but I was in the paper and they had this big article. And I was like, this is great. And it, it kind of was the thing that made my parents turn. They were like, oh, he's not throwing his life away. He yeah. he has something. And, um, that kind of started it, bro. But again, if I'm five minutes later than we were, we miss a red light, then I'm not in the hallway for Mr. Sias to see me joking around. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. And, yeah. Um, and I just I t- took some time to say that because my career has essentially been made up of a bunch of those moments. I'm sure more mm-hmm. of them will come out as we talk, but it's like, I just kind of, it was really just a lot of saying yes to opportunities that popped up for me and, um, and not giving up and just continuing and not having like a, a, a big ego. Like, cause when you first start something and you have success, I think the easy thing to do is to think is because you're so great. Mm-hmm. Um, but I was, I always understood like, I was never that great. I was just very excited. And people like that. <laughs> like people, yeah. like when you're excited, people get excited. So I was just always kind of really focused on craft. I was keep performing, but when I wasn't performing, I was working on getting better. So mm-hmm. like I was one of those cats where every time you saw me, I would be better than the last time you saw me. Yeah. Um, yeah. Then it got to a point where I got really, I got really, really good. Um, and then to kind of wrap that up, you know, I I just kind of followed that path everywhere I could. Did a lot of traveling, running back and forth to auditions. Did a lot of plays. I'm um, oh, when I did Dream Girls, kid or kid you not, the music director for Dream Girls was a guy named Dr. David Thomas. He was so inspiring to me. Mm-hmm. And uh, during the rehearsal process, I met his daughter, and we hated each other. Like we could not. Like we was getting on each other's nerves, and we end up getting married. So, <laughs> <laughs> Like theater, that moment, meeting Mr. Sias in that hallway set me on a path that literally shaped every area of my life. Because even, you know, being a person of faith, it came easier to me with the confidence <clears throat> that I was getting in the arts, you mm-hmm. know, like, and even just exploring other thoughts and other things. Like it was it was dope. Like it was it, when I look back at it now, it's funny because I thought I was in control of my life at that time. But when I look at the small Different. Even when me and Stu reconnected, we reconnected because somewhere in that journey, I started working at a movie theater, and um, he was working. <laughs> he was working at the movie theater at the time. Yeah. What we didn't know is the only reason I got that movie theater job is because the girl that I was going to marry, when I first started to date her, I was like, 
yeah, you know, I want to be your boyfriend. And basically, like, like she was like, I don't talk to dudes without jobs. And I was like, well, I don't. I was in my head like, I don't have a job. <laughs> <laughs> so I called my home girl, one of my close friends at the time. Her name was Marilyn. I said, yo, you think you could get me in at the movie theater? She was like, man, I've been told you about that job. I don't know if they still hire. And I'm like, check it out. I need a job. So, you know, I can get this girlfriend I'm trying to get. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and like, and so she got, and then like two days later, I was working at a movie theater. And when I got there, Stu was there. And it was like, Bruh, my sweet brother, I, re- I remember walking in about the clock in and I saw you behind the uh, concession stand. I had, I did a triple take. It's like, is that, is that, because uh, like at that time I was what, like 20? Probably. You, you, you was 19, 20, we was 19, 20 years old. But we like before that we hadn't seen each other since uh, each other. middle school. Well, middle school, I yeah. Seen, I, yeah, I hadn't seen you uh, since eighth grade, so I didn't see you right. all of all, all of high, high school. school. <laughs> I, I, I had just graduated, and we, you know, we came back, and it was cool, you know, like mm-hmm. it was, it was great for me. I, I, I that was one of my favorite jobs ever. Absolutely, like, I, I tell people I was so lucky to have such a good first job working at that movie theater towards the end of my tenure it got a little, so little I think crazy that's, that's all of us we gonna just act but, like cancel out the last three months of any job situation <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah you, that's true actually that's, well, yeah, maybe right, like the, the last year and a half of that job but <laughs> that's how you judge depending on like if you had a job for five years don't count the last year like judging because <laughs> usually that's when you start getting a nudge from god like all right it's getting all right. It's time to, <laughs> time to move on. <laughs> and the longer you, I've I've learned this. The longer you stay in the situation, after you start getting those nudges, the worse it gets. It yep. don't matter how hard you try. I'm sure Justin has experienced it too. Like especially when you start doing stuff like the podcasting and stuff in the arts and reviews and all of that. I'm sure there's a job where you like. Okay, maybe if I just cut my hours. No, uh, you need to quit. Yeah, right. Universe is like. <laughs> It's time to go. And yeah. if you, I, you know, it's crazy that you say that because I'm in that place right now. <laughs> like I'm doing, I'm doing like four things, and I love all of them. But I, I hit burnout, and I hit it like super quick. Like because I, 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 I've been going like a hundred miles an hour since like December, and it's and it's February, and I'm already burnt out. So I was like, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta cut something loose, man. Yeah. But like that, that, that brings me to my next point. Thank you for that, for that wonderful, wonderful bio. Like you, you, you went deeper than I thought you were gonna go. <laughs> <laughs> um. But uh, my next point was like you, you, you became a writer. When did, when did you start writing, and what keeps you motivated to keep creating? Like when you feel that burnout. What what is it that gets you over that over that hump? Um, okay, so part one of your question, I started writing to get girls. I was doing <laughs> because a lot, a lot a lot of your motivation is, is yeah. <laughs> hey, it's very clear. Like, I love I'm, it. I'm a very simple guy. Like when I first and that's the beginning, like when I first started writing, I was really inspired to do slam you poetry because mm-hmm. girls liked poets, you know, at the time. Because it was around the time when our generation was discovering, were rediscovering Love Jones. Yep. So around that time, like every, I wanted to be Darius Love Hall. Like, I, <laughs> like, I wanted, my MySpace name was Brother to the Night. Like, was, <laughs> <laughs> like that was my MySpace underscore thing. It was like Brother underscore two underscore the night. It's like, that was it. And, um, <laughs> And I, I thought it would be a great way to get girls. But then I saw this guy who actually works at, a, I think he works at Channel 8 now or something like Channel, maybe Channel 5, a guy named Chris Webb. I saw him do a poem called The Chase. And I was like, oh, this is like a real art. This is not just for trying to get girls. Like, this is legit. Mm-hmm. So I, then I started thinking a little deeper about it. <clears throat> and I did the Slam U team. Like, I was doing all of that stuff. But then my senior year of high school, um, because I, you know, after I do Dream Girls, I transfer to School of the Arts because I'm like, even though I'm a senior, I'm leaving Glenville and I'm going to go here, even if it's just a year. And I'm going to squeeze this orange for every ounce of juice it got. And Mm -hmm. I got there. I played a lead in the fall show. Like soon, like we hit the ground. We play, we're doing Frankenstein. I'm the creature. Like, 
It's just, it's <laughs> gone. And a um, little bit later, because I was a senior, my, um, my teacher, Dr. Miller, was like, yo, you have to write a play for senior year. And I was like, no, nah, um, I came here to act. Like, I, <laughs> I don't think you understand. <laughs> yeah, like, I was like, that was the, the recruitment pitch. Like, we, we were here to act. So I end up writing a show called uh, A Boy's Deliverance. And I just found a way to incorporate poetry into my, my, my journey with God at that time and girls. So it really is about a boy trying to come of age and find his way of leaving behind um, all these things that he knows to be familiar and reaching forward towards things he knows nothing about and using this art as the, as the vehicle to get there. And it ended up being way better than I thought it would ever be. And um, he's, my, my teacher submitted it to Seattle's Children's Theater Festival and they published it. And I was wow. like, Oh, I think I'm kind of dope. Um, that must, that was my first, like, that was, you know, that like, that was first yeah. one. And kind of like this, I just kind of realized, I said, yo, I'm a storyteller, but I still was like really focused on acting. So I kind of got yeah. away from, it. but then what happened was people don't realize this high school. If you do something in high school, whether it's sports, arts, arts <laughs> and crafts, I don't care what it is, spelling bee. High school is the last guarantee that you have that you will be doing it uh-huh. after high school. Like, cause when you're in high school, if there's a fall show and you're in the art school, you're going to be in the fall show. You might uh-huh. not be a lead, but you'll be in it. After you graduate, you are not guaranteed anything anymore. You're not, you, you're not going to be on the team. If you trash, you're not going to be in the play. If you trash, if you can't spell, you're not competing. If you can't eat hot dogs fast enough, you're not going to Nathan's, whatever it is. <laughs> <laughs> After high school, you got to earn it, right? Mm-hmm. So I started trying to earn it. I, I, I had this vision bigger than where Cleveland was. And um, I'm sitting there trying to earn it. And so I start traveling. I start going to Chicago to audition. I'm going to New York to audition. And I was trash. Like, I was like, okay, I was killing it in Cleveland. And something's not working. So I took some time, did some plays, got better, got better, got better. Went back out. Start going back out to New York, Chicago. Start getting callbacks and all of this stuff. <clears throat> And um, in the meantime, you know, I'm still doing the marriage thing. I'm, I'm got, I got kids. I'm so I'm trying to do life mm-hmm. and, and do the job and do the dream. And um, it started to become so strenuous. And I, but when I start going to New York, child, when I start going to New York, <laughs> I'm not that good at acting <laughs> because you get to these uh, and even with film and TV. Like I remember, I did a I did a play that they covered in the New York Times about Tupac. And I remember this moment being too broke to afford the paper. Because in Cleveland, the New York, the paper was like a dollar, maybe a dollar mm-hmm. twenty-five. The New York Times in Cleveland was five fifty. Mm-hmm. So like I was on the cover of the arts and theater section of New York Times and couldn't afford to buy it. And mm. I remember just having that moment, like, dang, like, okay, let me reevaluate. My money is funny and my change is strange. And um, I need to figure this out. So we, you know, we went through a bunch of stuff, but I just started to really realize like after that, you know, you do the New York Times, people start calling you to do stuff. Right. Like I remember I got that movie, The Lincoln Lawyer. I remember I had an audition for Lincoln Lawyer with Matt McConaughey that I Mm -hmm. bombed. It was awful. It was terrible. Even I knew it. I knew it halfway through the audition that this was bad. (laughs) And See, I, you you never told me that because I remember you were up for that, and then when you told me you didn't get it, like just out of my loyalty to you, I hadn't yeah. wa- I hadn't watched it, and I still <laughs> haven't watched it for that reason. I still haven't watched it either. It might be a great movie. I don't want to know. I'm Mario. <laughs> I'm Mario Winers in the bathtub with my clothes on. I don't. Want to know. <laughs> <laughs> I just I don't I just can't like because I was to me I was right there. I was right. This is the break that actors wish somebody has reached from. It was Jeffrey Gelber, who at the time was in charge of Universal, had reached all the way to Cleveland to ask me to. uh, This is the dream. And I bombed it. So I went into a really dark place because I'm like, my career is over. Like, Mm -hmm. because nobody else is coming to rescue me out of Cleveland. Like, it's Mm -hmm. not happening. 
I blew it. I had my shot. Because in my mind, this may be dumb or corny, but I'm being honest. In my mind, I'm hearing Eminem. You only get one shot. Do not miss your chance to blow. I missed it. <laughs> I'm like, I'm sorry, Marshall. I didn't lose myself. I was, I blew it. And um, I was, it was a really dark time for me, honestly, and which kind of connects to your question. How do I do it? Um, and it's, it's a couple of things. One is faith. Like I really believe I could make it. And after I was done being sad, I always landed at a place of believing I can make it. And the other thing was, I will always see somebody be successful that was worse than me. Mm -hmm. Like, I ain't going to put the actor out there, but I remember going to see a movie and there was an actor in it. Um, I was less. How many people watch this podcast? (laughs) <laughs> uh, watch it one or two <laughs> but listening to it like we we got a couple of listeners well Man, you, you, was, we, we'll talk about it at, at yeah, we'll talk about it off camera but it was it was, a, <laughs> it was a specific film that i saw and i was like this was tra- he trashed too i like so if he could be, <laughs> it was, i'm like if he could be trashed then i could be trash and be successful like, and, <laughs> so it was kind of like the reverse psychology because most people we see people be extremely successful and we look at them like we looking at Denzel and Meryl Streep and like, oh, they're so great. How can I? Or even in <clears> basketball, <throat> we'd be like, we look at LeBron and then like, how can, I'll never be that. I'm like, man, mm-hmm. Eric Snow looked like he's struggling. I might be able to keep up with that. <laughs> like, that's how I felt about which, by the way, I ended up playing Eric Snow one day. I could not keep up. But that's neither here nor there. But it, I, Pro trash I, is 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 different than regular trash. trash. <laughs> it is it is very it is levels to this. Okay, <laughs> you take the guy who gets no minutes on your on the worst team in the league, and you drop him in your church league. Y'all winning the chip. Just know that. <laughs> 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 like, I don't care how good you think your friends are; they're not that. <laughs> and um, but I, I saw this actor, and so that would be my mindset. Like I would see a movie, like I could write a story better than this. I would see a TV show. I could do, I could be, I can act better than that. Like, or a, or equally as bad. Maybe not better, mm-hmm. but I can be equally as, I won't be worse than what this performance was. I can at um, least. <laughs> like, I can, I can at least suck. That's what I can <laughs> <laughs> I, I won't be unwatchable. And um, <clears throat> so with my faith and with that renewed confidence and my ability to at least suck, I kind of will always pick myself out of these, um, like just me and God picking ourselves out of these dark places. And then once you got a wife and family and kids, my wife is encouraging me. Your kids are telling you you're great. You're doing like I've always had dope people, even like people like Stu that was in my life that would just be like, man, you got it. Like, you're great. Not knowing internally, I'm sitting here like I'm never going to make it. I'm never going to make it. But you got people like, man, you this and you that. And even if it's not true, if it's enough to keep you going, grab it. Like, Mm -hmm. you know, like, I don't care what. If people tell you, oh, man, you got the best podcast in the world. Maybe you listen to Rogan and say, man, I ain't got the best. But if he thinks so, grab it. Like, if that's all Mm -hmm. you need. And so for me, that's really what it was. Honestly, bro, like, it was really that. Like, how do I pull myself out of these dark places that come around periodically all the time? And I think the last thing I would say about it is I've always been surrounded by people who inspire me. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know if people heard it, but you got this, you have an EP, like, that was super dope. And I was like... You reach way back. You reach way back. (laughs) I'm just like, those are things that inspire. I was like, yo, I know this guy personally, and he went and made music that is music. Like, this is good. Even if it's not, you know, like maybe it's not to the, he not Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis or whatever, (laughs) but he also not producer such and such that has a trash song on the radio right now. Mm -hmm. So like, I mean, he had this track called Yesterday that I love, like I loved. Yeah. I I remember you hit me up. I I thought it was a great, I'm like, yo, this is a great song. Like I can hear Raheem Devon singing this song. Like this is a great (laughs) song. And, um. I just always had people around me who inspire me too. Like I, I hate, I hate, I don't hate a lot of things, but I do hate the myth of the self-made anything. Cause mm-hmm. it's not, it's impossible. It is impossible. Life is too freaking hard. 
Yeah. <laughs> it's too hard. Nobody did it by themselves. You might have mm-hmm. got it out the mud or whatever. You might have started from the bottom and now you're here, but you didn't mm-hmm. do it by yourself. It's it's not possible. So you know that. I hope that like answers it good. No, I, no, absolutely. I mean that that was more than than sufficient. Uh, thank you, thank you. Because oh, sure. uh, you know l- lately I've been kind of you know in in that rut and, and I feel like it's 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 an uphill battle. I mean I I still enjoy what I do, but sometimes it I, I get in these I feel like I hit a creative wall and it, and it, it takes like sometimes it, it feels like it takes like all of my mental strength to run through that wall it does and, and you know what the crazy thing is you break through that wall and you use everything to get through it and now you have nothing left and you still got to get up yeah like, you know what I'm saying like and that's and, and for me like to be honest and I don't know <clears throat> we might get here later and I, so I might just touch on it a little but I remember I quit my job around this time last year, like literally almost to the day mm-hmm. last year. I mean, I didn't tell them I quit at this time, but I knew I had quit in my mind. Like mm-hmm. I, maybe we'll get to the how I quit story. I don't know. But like to the day. And so to be where I am today and don't get me wrong. Sometimes people say, yeah, I quit my job and then run. And then uh, Russell Simmons walked in. the. St- no, that didn't happen. I quit my job <laughs> one of the worst years of my life like (laughs) it felt like i made every this wrong decision but i was sitting there thinking like how can i make a better one i didn't know like i quit my job and was in therapy (laughs) i was like lord how many more months of insurance do i have let's get let's do it because i'm 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 losing it you made a good point and it's it's um it's good that you brought up um mental health because I feel like that's something that uh, a lot of uh, people of color don't really talk about. Can I can I say something about that real quick? Mm-hmm. I feel like we uh, we like glorify and 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 fantasize about the struggle and the dream. Mm-hmm. We make and we make that like it's a beautiful thing. It sucks. Yeah. It's trash. It's yeah. hard. It's bad. Yeah. It makes you like trying, like chasing the dream is not for the faint of heart, bro. It's not it is, I, like, and I, I feel like people sometimes will say it was easy for you to say that now, bro. It is. I'm saying it from the, to a certain extent from the other side, but what I'm learning, the more people I meet is that this thing happens in cycles. You may be up for five years. I mean, like, Look at somebody. I would never down him. He's an icon, and I'll always give him his due respect. Look at Will. He's Mm -hmm. Will Smith. Made a mistake. He was wrong 100,000% in my opinion. He was dead wrong. Made a mistake and now is dealing with and was dealing with depression. Had to go to a whole new country to try to put it all back together. Like It happens in waves. So it's like there's never a moment. I kind of – my football coach in college used to always say, and win, lose, or draw, he would always say, "It's never as bad as it seems, and it's never as good as it seems." Mm-hmm. Like we could beat somebody by fifty, never as good as it seems. You know, like that was, and it kind of was something I kept with me. Like just be even keel because it could all go away. It could all come right back. Like you never, mm-hmm. you never know. So it's like, but you need to be able to find some sort or semblance of balance, and that's what my focus was in therapy. How do I make sure my um lows don't get so low because i understood mm-hmm. that life is going to have peaks and valleys but what I, my therapist i wanted to focus on was what are some tools that i can get to make sure my lows don't get me back to a place when i i don't want to i can't get out of bed how do we yeah. get out of those spaces mm-hmm. no that's good that's good um uh, what helped me was getting in a routine <clears throat> because i was i was really uh really in a bad in a bad place uh late last year and one day in december i it it it, just, it it struck me like like lightning i was like i gotta get up and make this thing happen because it ain't gonna it ain't gonna come to me it ain't gonna fall out the sky it, i can't i can't count on on opportunities but in order to make this thing happen i have to get my mind right for anything else yeah you know and that that me. thought hit me like i said it, it hit me like a bolt of lightning and from that point on 
um i've been i've, I've been i've been getting you know, getting up earlier and yeah. uh starting my day with with affirmations and, and, and gratitude and that just that puts me in it, it it makes me feel better about myself which puts which then puts me in a creative mindset and i feel like yeah. i can i can create once i have that time for myself and not Bro. being reactionary Bro, I'm not, I can't, I cannot lie. Like this hit me. I was studying recently and it's hit me. I was thinking about this story in the, in the Bible about Lazarus. Mm -hmm. And it, at first I was laughing because I'm like, man, how wild is it that you're dead? Like you're dead. Like, you know, let's just say the story is lightweight accurate. Like, let's just say <laughs> La Lazarus is dead and Jesus raises him from the dead. Could you imagine? I was like, could you imagine being dead and being undead, but you're not like a zombie? You back to normal? It's kind of like right. wait, like you know what I'm saying? Like wait, wait, yeah. wait. What are we doing? But the thing that hit me was, like he raised him in his story. In the story, he raises him, and he doesn't say, "Now go be perfect." He doesn't say, "Now, now go and live your best life." He doesn't say mm -hmm. any of that. He just tells him to get up, and. That was something that hit me because I realized sometimes in life, all you have to do is be able to get up. And if mm -hmm. you can get up, you can figure it out from there. If you there's no expectations on you anymore, like you just get up, just get up. And if, and that was something I tried to keep with me. It's like, OK, can I get up? Because I remember days when I couldn't. Like I remember days when my wife I remember days my wife wanted to have sex and I was like, I'll do it, but I'm not. You know. Man, <laughs> man, I'll do it, but uh, not really. You about to get some pretty terrible action. Right? <laughs> I just don't feel good about myself. I don't know how this is gonna go. <laughs> so, uh, I remember like being that down, and but because I couldn't get up. And when you don't feel good about your, and people don't talk about this, but as and regard for black men, but for Asian <clears throat> women. When a man is not operating in his purpose and doesn't feel good about himself, bro, like this, how you get your man? Ass, you get it your is the worst. Me. It's the like it is the worst. Men, it's something inside of men, and I'm not trying. I don't want no beef with nobody, but it is something about men that that there's something there that makes you want to get up and go do something. Like do I, something, I, yeah. I do something. <laughs> Even if I don't know what the something is, it's it causes us you need to You need that feeling of accomplishment. <laughs> yes. And that's what I learned about list. Like the the uh, a task, like blocking stuff mm -hmm. is task. Even if my task is to get up and my to-do list says get up, brush teeth, uh, wash your face, wash your booty, scrub, you know, whatever <laughs> it is. But if I can get up and by nine o'clock I've checked those things off my 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 to do list, I feel better. I did something today, and it makes me mm -hmm. want to go get the rest of those things on that list. That was a tool, and I think yeah. kind of that was a tool that helped. Me. It still helps. I still use it to this day. I'm looking. Yeah. I'm looking at my list like I haven't done anything. <laughs> it's a waste of the day. <laughs> No, I, I mean that, that that you that's that's a great that's a great point. You know, it's you know the little things for me. It was just starting my day with gratitude. Uh, you know, because th of course I would be, you know, pretty pissed off from the day before. You know, from you know my my long long shift working, but you know, um, when I wake up, there's a sense of 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 optimism because I've built that habit of, um of starting my day with gratitude. I don't like getting up early. I don't like getting up early at all, but mm -hmm. I like how I feel when I'm about 45 minutes into my routine. And yeah. <clears throat> there have been plenty of days um, over the last two or three weeks or so where I got up feeling crappy. But by the time I got through my routine, by the time I wrote down my five things I was grateful for by the time I went through all my affirmations and prayed and meditated I felt so much better and I that doesn't mean I, that I felt great right because every bit every day is, isn't gonna feel great but I felt like okay I can get something done today if I can just get one yeah. thing done today I'll be all right just 
just it's like that's like that old African proverb that says, "How do you eat an elephant <clears throat> one bite at a time?" If mm-hmm. I can just get up and take one bite out this elephant every day, it might be spoiled by the time I finish, but at some point, <laughs> it's going to be gone. You know. Yeah. Upload. What inspired you to write this this uh, sci-fi uh, sci-fi thriller that is uh, upload? Man. Two two big things. I'll try to make them quick. First one, I was, I was teaching at the time and my kids are lazy. Kids are so, <laughs> like, nobody, like, kids, like, when you, even to the point now, I don't know if you notice it, but this generation, they don't even care about getting a license. Do you remember how important it was for yeah. us? To get a yeah. These kids, like, I was talking to my brother. He was he 21, something like that. He ain't got his license yet. I'm like, what are you doing? He's like, oh, it's not a big deal. Bruh, I, I, got, I, I, was, I was a late bloomer at 18 and felt embarrassed because I, I, couldn't, Bro, I didn't have my license, license already. At 18, you was behind. You ain't <laughs> Like, anytime you was, you, was, you was 16 and wasn't driving yet, any dude yeah. with a car could take your girl. <laughs> because these days you'd be like yeah girl i'm gonna send an uber to come swoop you blah blah like we didn't yeah. have that so like so i'm looking at it like kids don't want to do anything so and i and i just kind of play because to me sci-fi is playing out reality in an extreme right so yes. i played that out in an extreme and i said where are we going if we stay this way and i said we're going to be at a place where people just want to i want it all instantly and if i can't mm-hmm. get it instantly i don't want it at all so that's where part one comes from. Part two of it comes from, I started, I was watching an interview with Junior Seau's son. Mm-hmm. And they asked him, they said, hey, I mean, yeah, your father killed himself, but would you trade it all to have him back? I mean, he was he's one of the best linebackers of all time. Would you trade that? And his son was like, yes. What are you talking <laughs> about? <laughs> And you can see the interviewer was shocked. He's like, oh, I thought. And I was just thinking about the fact that all of our revolutionary leaders died so early, so young. And I started to think about we lost the revolutionary, but somebody lost a dad. Somebody lost their uncle. They lost Mm -hmm. their favorite uncle. They lost. You know what I'm saying? Like, so we we've turned them into mythical figures. And with Upload, I wanted to break them down into human people and talk about the people who are left behind. So Upload is about the people who are left behind when somebody uh, does the right thing, but it costs them everything, you know? Mm -hmm. Because I'm not saying any of Martin Luther King's kids would turn around and regret or try to take something back or whatever, but I'm sure they miss their dad. Mm -hmm. I'm sure when they look around and see somebody their dad's age getting celebrated, they say, dad, that, you know what I mean? Um, right. And I think it's, you know, Martin Luther King is, is who he is. Malcolm X or uh, Malik el Shabazz. They like, they are who they are to us. And they meant, they meant everything, you know, like they were everything to us, but man, what did they lost dads? Mm-hmm. And, and so those two thoughts were, this is where I came from with upload because just thinking about what happens when you play this out to an extreme and it wasn't intended to be a sci-fi. If you like, and if you watch it, you really see it's the story about people because, yeah, definitely. That's what it's written to me. It's like, I mean, if I play this out in an extreme a hundred years from now, this is where we are. So it falls into sci fi, but it's really just about that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, definitely. When when you sent me, um, when you sent me the, the, the script for it and I read mm-hmm. it, like, I read it nonstop. Like I, I read it from start from start to finish because I yeah. was I was instantly drawn in by that by the opening, yeah. um, and not you no know, not to get into too many spoilers for those of you that haven't seen. I'll also put the link in the, in the show notes for that short short film because it's a great short film. But um, when that that opening scene, it got me so so invested because I was like, okay, he like this the this guy ha- has 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 something to say he has something to accomplish and i saw that in in the writing and in the dialogue um that you had something to say and you had something that you that that you wanted yeah. to accomplish it, would i be correct in saying that you kind of put yourself into the dad a little bit yeah i don't i mean i get chills just even hearing you say that um cuz i my son plays 
the the young boy in the flashback. Mm-hmm. And I remember his performance was trash because I couldn't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just be honest. Because I, I, it was so much of me in it, I couldn't put as the director, as a co not as a director, but as somebody on set, like I couldn't push my son to get the performance out of him because it hurt. Mm-hmm. And I didn't want to take my son to that place. Because, mm-hmm. you know, if it was one of my students, I would have been like, imagine your dad died. Like, how would you feel? Mm-hmm. I couldn't even say it to my boy. You know what I mean? Right. And I, yeah. And, and to me, it, I got chills when you said it, because that's the school. When, and if we talk about it later, we may or may not. But when we talk about my training as a as a as a writer, the 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 feet that I sit under comes from people who start with what do you have to say? Mm-hmm. That's the starting question. Like every script I write, what am I? What do I have to say? I think it's mm-hmm. great for people to draw their own conclusions from your work, but I want to make sure that I'm saying something, mm-hmm. or else why? Why do it? So like everything I've ever done comes from a very real place for me. And sometimes people say, "Well, what about this?" I'm like, and and that's another thing I wanted to show people: you could write sci-fi and still come from a real place. The well, next thing I want to talk about before we get into uh, our final our final segment, draft time, is uh, upstairs. Now, this is a web series that you uh, wrote and created. That, from what I understand, was inspired by uh, Living Single, and but and you wanted to do it from the the guy's perspective. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So mm-hmm. when I did upstairs, that was the thing. I was I would watch it and I would be like, man, what would happen if we lived with Kyle and Overton? What would we uh-huh. see if we lived with them? Not like they just um, because I think living single is the standard for a sitcom. Um, not to say I do think and we'll, we'll get there later with what I think is the best. But I think in terms of from a from an objective standpoint and how it's crafted and character work and scene work and comedy and and the tackling real issues. I think it's the standard personally. Um, but I always, I always want, so I didn't want to touch that, but I did want to have a conversation about what is it like to be Overton and sing, uh, Overton and, and, and Kyle and live in that, and live in that place. Absolutely. That's what it, that's what it was about for me. A hundred percent. I was, I was watching the trailer uh, earlier tonight and I, I it, it took me back to that time. Bro, um, wait, wait, when, wait. It was all this bu- it was all this buzz around it and it took me back to like getting getting excited about it. <laughs> wait, so Stu, I remember and I don't know if you told Justin this. So Stu did he did the theme song. And let me say this, first of all, probably once a week somebody calls me about upstairs. Like when are you doing and like when are we getting more Yeah, what's up with what's up with season two, bro? <laughs> like <laughs> People be pressing me about that. Like, <laughs> like, I mean, I'm just saying, like, you left us a big cliffhanger. Um, <laughs> but I remember Stu, he sent me the theme song. I was going to get my kids Wendy's on uh, on Lee on Lee and Warrensville Center, or um, Warrensville Center Road in Kinsman. Um, mm-hmm. I was sitting right. I was I was going to that Wendy's right there, Chagrin. I think it is in the suburbs. Chagrin, but, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I was in that parking lot. You sent it to me. I had to pull out of the drive-through because I was crying because I sent him a list of words of what I wanted to say, and this dude put it together in this song, and he sent it to me, and it sounded. It gave me nostalgia, and it made me feel like I had a place amongst greatest sitcoms like that's how the theme song made me feel because mm-hmm. i felt like you could plug it in there with i was like when they came i was like doom, 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 doom. i was like yes from the very bottom to the very top like it, it, it fit to me it fit in the canon um so hearing when when Stu sent me the theme song if you don't watch, if you turn upstairs off after the theme song play, I'm fine with that. Just go <laughs> listen to the theme song. No, it, the show is great. Watch the whole show. It's it's great. Man, you could watch it. You could watch it in an hour. If you want, you could just take an hour and watch it. And um, maybe the right person will see it one day. Cause I so I actually had I wrote a second season. 
what's up? What you know? What's up? <laughs> I mean, I, 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 I know, I know it's hard. It's it's hard to get everybody back together. But what, like, what, 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 what is really the hold up? Man, it was. It was I know you could get on the phone and coordinate something. It was it was it was bread because at this point the issue was everybody was in a different place in life. You uh, know, everybody got kids, everybody it's a, got a lot going on. So and we and I had I, like I put pretty much all the bread up for upstairs myself. Mm-hmm. And I just didn't have it. Um so but I but I wrote it and I actually wrote two different versions. I wrote a version that picks up right there. And I wrote mm-hmm. another version that flashes us forward to make up for the years mm-hmm. where you like see where we are now. And then we back into how we got here over that season. But if oh. I did that, I would want to do a second and I would need about 50,000 because I would want to do the second and the third season and just close it. Mm-hmm. Because my, my vision for that would be to do it, show you where these people are right now. And the rest of the season is, showing you how we arrived there and then immediately hit you with a third season of how we're going to end upstairs. Um, Mm -hmm. So I would want to film it all just so we can, we can do it and get it. If I ever get $50,000, bro. (laughs) If because the, it was, it was so fun. It was so raw. We was all just kind of man, Justin, I kid you not. We were all like, and none of us have, we, none of us had anything. We we was just all a bunch of hungry people. Everybody who was in upstairs, I gotta shout them out because they all did it for free. Mm-hmm. Like nobody on there got paid to do nothing. We didn't rent a location. Like it was just. And I remember standing in the room and telling people like, "This is my idea. This is what I want y'all to shut y'all schedules down for a whole week, and um, just knock it out for me." And I I can't. And nobody's getting paid. <laughs> like that was the ask. The ask was. Shut your schedule down. Shut your life down for a whole week. Nobody's getting paid, but this is what we're going to do. Yeah. And to be honest, oh, I'll tell you about it. I think I might be able to get it like this time next year when yeah. something happens. I might be able to say, look, y'all, I can't pay you right now, but you see what's going on in my life. We probably like, let's let's do this. Like, let's just shut down another week and get it done. Yeah, I'm. Hey, listen, I be, I believe it, bro. I believe it. I I, I know I that, that that. I still don't believe that that's upstairs gone. is done. It was, good. it was good. It was too good. It was too <laughs> good, man. It was funny because upload is definitely more like you could tell my growth as a filmmaker and as mm-hmm. a producer with upload, but in terms of just story and just good content, I mean that sounds really bad. I'm not shading anybody. No. <laughs> no, I know what you mean. Upload, Up, upload, upload is is really good. Up, upload is really up my alley because I'm a I'm a uh, sci-fi type guy. But yeah. upstairs is your baby, and you can it you can tell moment. that that's your baby. <laughs> it was upstairs was a moment, like, and even now, like, I mean, after we did that, the dude who played Justin did a movie in Sundance. The dude who mm-hmm. played Shaka premiere to play in, in, in Seoul. I think that's the name of the country. It's called Seoul or Seoul or whatever. I ain't that great. But yeah, he he premiered to play over there. The guy who played the actor is in Yale right now getting his MFA. Like the people in that cast even went to do like the, the, like that's if I told you uh, another TV show like yeah this is the cast that was in that TV show they went on to do this. Like we really mm-hmm. had a bunch of people that were that were there and it's like wow like this was it was a moment it was a moment that's that's, that's, awesome. that's amazing that's amazing to hear where they are now from from that um but thank you for that uh it's been wonderful talking to you but we're gonna get into to some fun and games right <laughs> now uh we're gonna get into my favorite uh segment of the night and that is draft time wait, and wait, wait, tonight's wait. uh <laughs> The night the night category is sitcoms. <laughs> you good? You look you look stressed, man. I don't want to I don't want <laughs> Listen, you you had you ain't heard the rules yet. You ain't even heard the rules yet. Okay, okay, okay. I might be able to <laughs> there might be a plead the fifth in here. <laughs> All right. So the draft time rules are the host and the guests will take turns making picks from the feature draft pool. First time guests will go first. 
once a pick is selected, it is immediately taken off the board. Okay. So you can, we can't we can't have the same picks. Okay. So you'll oh go gosh. first. I've been the I general believe, manager. I believe Justin minutes. will go next, and I'll go last. I've been a, I've been the general manager of a team for two minutes, and I'm already having heart palpitations. <laughs> <laughs> How you think the Lakers must feel? Hey, Rob is chilling. I don't care what nobody say. Rob, <laughs> Rob like, hey, because he's the only GM in the in the whole league right now that if he doesn't do his job, he's still not. They're gonna blame LeBron still. <laughs> yes, <laughs> you, you man, you you right about that. If, you right about LeBron that. Even though it ain't LeBron's fault, LeBron is Le, LeBron, LeBron old man. Bron is playing out of his mind right now, so if, it ain't his fault. If, <laughs> if Rob don't make one phone call, they will still say, "Man, LeBron didn't do enough." <laughs> <laughs> like why didn't LeBron uh, make the trade <laughs> oh man alright so round one sitcoms what's, Wait, what's, and so what, what are we drafting them pick? for are we drafting them mm-hmm. to then get to a, a team that's going to have to battle or are we just no picking, no we, we, we just we just don't we just going to go through just, the picks and normally we see we used to do this live uh, back on when I when I did my my old my old channel when I was a physical mm-hmm. media collector, um, we used to do a live in the chat with vote on it. But because we're doing it, you know, on a Saturday night now, and yeah. people are out having fun, and the last thing people are doing is on YouTube, um, <laughs> yeah. we just we just vote amongst ourselves. The last three yeah. times that Justin and I have done it has been a wash because we had such great uh, <clears throat> such great lists. But I hope that. With having a third person here, it'll make it harder to have a great list. Yeah, it is because I'm tell- I'm stressed. I just want you to know that. <laughs> <laughs> no need, no reason to stress. These are just, I mean, we're picking what Stuart like what our favorite sitcoms, basically, like what we think the best. Yeah, sitcoms yeah, are. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Your favorite. Sitcom. What do we think the best is, or our favorites? Either one, um, whichever. You know what? Let's go. Let's go subjectively. Favorite. Subjective favorite. Okay, okay, that makes me feel a little better. Yeah, just go ahead. Just go ahead and pick. We already know what your number one is, so just go ahead and say it. Wait, you <laughs> throw it out. I need to see the board. What's on the board? No, just go ahead. Just go ahead and say it. Ain't no. Ain't, you get, you ain't get no first pick, board. I, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. Oh, okay, yeah, so I just. I ain't I just, doing all that. <laughs> I can take any sitcom. You can yep. take any sitcom. All right, give me. Oh, this is interesting because, um, based on where I work. Let me, uh, but let me, let me get living single. I, I, I was, it's only, it was only a matter of time. <laughs> <laughs> let me get living single. All right, living single. So y'all still got some heavy hitters on the board, though. Yeah. Around, round four is going to get hard. That's, that's. Yeah, round gonna four is going, because these first <laughs> couple rounds, it's enough great sitcoms. Yeah. So that's what I'm really trying to gauge how much time I have because I got some sleepers that I want to pick, and I'm mm-hmm. trying to gauge how many rounds can I go before grabbing them. Right. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I might just take it off the board just to be safe. But yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. Uh, Justin. Uh, for me, it's got to be Cheers. That's one of I, my favorites. I, I knew you were gonna pick Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> that. I, well, I'm gonna tell you, I'll send offline on that. But that's, <laughs> So I'll tell you, so real quick, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to talk forever about this, but like I was listening to a podcast, this was years ago when I pretty much first moved to California and uh, Aaron Sorkin was talking about how Frasier was like the, one of the best written TV shows of all time. And I had seen episodes of Frasier here and there and I went, really Frasier? And so then I thought, well, I'll watch it, but I got to watch Cheers first. So I marathon like all 11 seasons of Cheers and thought it was incredible. And then I watched all 11 seasons of Frasier and I thought. Aaron Sorkin knows what he's talking about. <laughs> hey, I think that's that might be true. And if it wasn't for, if it wasn't for, I'm blanking on his name right now, the guy who from Frasier and Cheers, uh, Kelsey Grammer. Uh, Kelsey Grammer. If it wasn't for Kelsey Grammer, it is very possible we would not have the career of Mara Brockakiel. He was the he was the guy who now he right. wasn't the guy who taught her anything, but he was the guy who went to the studios. And said, um, "We need to do her show." And her first yeah. show was Girlfriends. He went to and bat for Kelsey, it. Yeah, Kelsey Grammer, executive producer, said, "If anybody knows what's a good show, it's me." 
<laughs> yeah, I guess he was on two of the greatest sitcoms. Yeah, I'm I'm all. <laughs> um, all right, so it's my turn. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to go. Oh, man. Normally, it wouldn't be my number one, but I'm going to pick it so y'all can't get it. <laughs> okay. Because if, if I let y'all pick it, then it's a wrap for me. So I'm going to go. Okay. This, 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 this is my heavy hitter. I know what he's. I know where you're going. Fresh, Fresh Prince of Bel Air. I knew it. I knew, <laughs> I knew it. You know, that's great. So, the obvious choice here for me because <laughs> because it's on the board is Martin. And I probably, you know what? I, I'm not gonna go Martin, but it's tough because I'm really praying. If y'all say the show I want to take next round, I'm 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 gonna be really upset. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like I feel like it's gonna skate through. I feel like it's gonna skate through. But Come on. I'm not I'm not gonna take Martin. I'm taking everybody loves Raymond. Wow. <laughs> yo, yo, that was one of your sleepers. That was one of your sleepers. Cause I, and I know my... that. And I know that because it was one of my sleepers. <laughs> hey, that one? Hey. <laughs> yo. Everybody loves Raymond has always been good, but when you get married and like like in the veteran married, it's a whole nother type of funny, bro. Dude, now, <laughs> now that I have been married 11 and a half years, it might be the funniest show. Of Yo, all. watch like, wow. watching that show and wa watching Ray on that show will make you want to be a better husband. It's like no wonder Deborah always mad. You suck, bro. <laughs> Dude, Ray, Ray didn't cook, he didn't clean. He already did was go to work. That was <laughs> he didn't help. He didn't defend her. He didn't do nothing, man. <laughs> he, he defended her every now and then. He he was a little, he was a little slow slow to do it. But <laughs> Raymond left the kids at the house by themselves to go get some cereal from the grocery store. <laughs> oh, oh man, that was a great pick. That was a great pick. Oh man, Justin, you up? Um, I guess just because it, it wasn't taken, I'm gonna go with Frazier. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's not the one I was gonna pick, but I was hoping it would be there. Right, right. Frazier is <laughs> Frazier. When you start talking about comedic writing, I mean, mm -hmm. good, great. It's so clean. Yeah. It's, it's it's to me. It's why I like I like it more than Seinfeld because Frazier is so clean. And the actors make it even better, but I feel like you could plug mm -hmm. in a bunch of people, and it was the writing is so good on that show. I think it would still be great. Yeah, right. right. I, with, yeah, I agree. With, with um, with Seinfeld, it was more like the chemistry of the cast. Yeah, not, like, mm -hmm. not saying that not saying that the writing was bad because right. it was good, you, but I feel like it, it was it was more just a a, a cast dynamic. It had, it had real good. I chemistry. really don't think you can pluck anybody out. Like I think it has to be then. It'd be a different show. right, right. Yeah, absolutely. But phrase, whew, Fraser, man, he's some good show. Y'all getting on my nerves. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know what? Okay, I'm gonna go with number two. Now that I, I've I've gotten Fresh Prince out the way, uh, the Cosby Show. I'm gonna go ahead and pick oh, the Cosby Show. Dang, that's a good show. Because that is, that's my true number one. But I did yeah. not want y'all to get Fresh Prince. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that's how I feel about some of these other shows. Like, Fresh Prince on the roster, like, that's like having Scotty as your number as your number two man. <laughs> right. So it's back on, is it back on me? Yeah, yep. it's back yep. on you, round three. All right, wow. I'm letting you know right now, we getting canceled by black people because Martin's probably going to make it another round. <laughs> Listen. Because Listen, I I don't blame you. I don't blame you. We'll get into it when, when we, because somebody gonna pick it, but yeah. we'll get into it when we get there. I'm going. Boy meets world. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Are y'all crying? Come on, oh, man. Something off. Yeah, Come I on, man. <laughs> Hold on. I almost I almost hold said on, Boy Meets on. World instead of hold on, Frazier. Hold on. I think I think I think I think they talking. We we got we got a we got a trade to announce. <laughs> 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 team Team Stew 
<laughs> would like to trade to go to the <laughs> Oh man. I, man. Oh I, I will give I, you my I will give you my next round pick. <laughs> for... <laughs> oh boy meets world. Man, how did how did I not pick that? Like, oh, you know, it, it's, it's all good. It's all good. That was the one I've been thinking about the whole time because I just was like, okay, that's 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 one I, okay. I think it might slip through unpicked. I'm telling you, man, I was going back and forth to Frazier and Boy Meets World, and I was like, well, they didn't pick Frazier, so I guess I'll go with Frazier. But mm, I'm mad. Yeah, I'm upset. <laughs> I'm <am> mad. <laughs> That's your heavy hitter, man. That's your heavy hitter. That was a great choice. That's, yeah. a, that's a that was a knock, that was a hangmaker. Oh man. Let's go, Justin. Round um three. so for my next pick, I actually hadn't thought of this, but you guys brought it up. And if it, we're talking favorites, it is absolutely one of my favorite sitcoms. So I'm going with Seinfeld. I love that show. So God damn it. <laughs> Dude, like object, he might have the he might have the objective list. Like if you he might, he might, he might. You're talking Cheers, Frazier, Seinfeld, that like, yeah. yeah, yeah. Like if you had a Twitter um, poll, people would be like, "Oh, that that's the table, that's the house I'm going over." Yeah, yeah, for <laughs> right. sure, for sure. Oh man, round three, round three. I think I'm a, I think I'm a pick. It'll be, it'll probably be a sleeper to y'all, but it's not a sleeper to me. Um, and that's the Cosby Show spinoff, A Different World. <clears throat> I love a different world. Um, I, I I've I've probably watched that more than the Cosby Show, even though the Cosby Show is my is my all time favorite. Here's what but I think. It, it, uh, it's, oh my god, it has so here's much rewatchability. I think the highs of Cosby Show are better, but I do think a different world is is more consistent. Mm, yeah, I don't think a different world has any duds in it. Cosby Show had a couple, like maybe a whole season where I was like, all right. But I feel like a different world had no. It's like it was solid from start to finish. Mm -hmm. Like Cosby. For me, that that for me that Cosby Show dud season was the last season, and that was because it was very, uh, it was very heavy on like uh, Erica Alexander's character and her and her friends. And I was like, I like them, but I don't like them enough to want to, to want whole episodes their, about them. <laughs> they lost their way. Like them deciding. Well, first they decided they needed younger because of what was happening with Earth, or I think it was, mm-hmm. or something like that. Like something was going on in TV world where they decided we need Raven. We need a Raven. Mm-hmm. And then something happened in TV world where they just. I saw a documentary about it where they decided we need the cousin Pam. Well, what? It, well, with with uh, Raven who played Olivia, it was because Rudy got older. She wasn't right. the cute little kid anymore. Right. She was becoming a teenager. So it was and like, they we, were like, we, we need that cute little kid. Yeah. So if I'm back up with four, if uh, uh, how many rounds are this through? How, how many rounds are we doing? Five, five. Five. Oh, so I still I got another one. Okay. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Am I on the clock? Am I on the clock? <laughs> okay. Take your time. I'm, since I'm up and y'all can't take it, I'm gonna tell you. No, I want I don't want to tell you what I'm going between because then you might take it. Might be like, oh I'm <laughs> yeah, you just pick. Oh. I'll pick it. I don't care. I'm trying to win. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta go. It's one of my favorites. It's one of my favorites. Can we do a bonus like modern classic round? Sure. Like, like a quick. Like a quick it, it could, no, it could, no, it could be. It, it, you if you want to have a modern pick, you can no, no, absolutely no. I, pick. I, a, I don't, but I do want to okay. shout out a show. So that, we'll that we'll I do think. we'll do honorable mentions. One, oh, yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, awesome. I I think I I gotta go girlfriends. I gotta go girlfriends. You definitely got bonus points with my wife. <laughs> Because that's think, our favorite show of all time. I oh man, but I'm gonna have to we'll, we'll talk about it. But I, I, I think I think girlfriends it's weird when I watch it, I get it not but here's what I will say. To me, girlfriends is the first true dramedy on TV. 
like Girlfriends was one of those first shows that would go seven pages without a joke. Like we were just going to deal with the drama of what happened. And I, yeah. I, I just, I love those <laughs> women. I love those characters. I love, I love, I love William. Love <laughs> the first guy of his kind, the black Republican <laughs> with a big dingaling on TV. <laughs> <laughs> You've never seen a character like that since. Justin, you up, man. I'm trying to. All right. Please, Lord, don't say the show I want. It's one more thing I need. <laughs> I don't know if this is, I don't know if this is going to be the show you're thinking of, but it's one of my personal favorites. It's also one that introduced a cute little kid in the later seasons because the the main okay. kids had gotten older. Not but it's mind. um it's growing pains. I love growing pains growing up. Oh, okay. Growing, growing pains, pains is another one that was I think I know which one you're gonna pick. I don't, uh, I don't think you know. I, I think I, I, I'm not <laughs> I don't think you know. I don't think you know where I'm going. So we, we, we've we've gotten, one question. we've gotten you know, we've gotten around four and no one has picked Martin. I know we somebody's getting canceled. <laughs> I, I'm hoping it's you. <laughs> And the funny thing is, I still ain't going to be. I was thinking the same thing. I was like, man, I like I Martin, was, but. I almost, <laughs> I almost picked it in round four out of obligation as a black man. Like, I got to pick it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I, if I'm honest, it's not. No, it's not on my. Because, for example, like, Martin was on BET Plus, and I had it for like a year and didn't run it. I didn't watch wow. it. Like, if I'm honest. I've wa- I've wa- I've I've watched it from time to time. It's for me. I can't I can't binge it. I can't because I can't it, it's it's like so Martin is so hyperactive. <laughs> it's good though. It I, and maybe that's what it is. At the time, Martin was everything, but mm-hmm. replay it's replay value. Yeah, it's not as good. Well, be, it's like, it doesn't have the things to lean on like these. It was a Martin was event TV. So mm-hmm. like yeah. once you saw the event. It's not as exciting. Gotcha, right? gotcha, gotcha. And it was like, like the it, that was a show that was like heavy on the comedy yeah. and not necessarily the substance behind the comedy. Right. But but, the, but 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 it worked because it was a very funny show. It was yep. <laughs> it's event TV versus like a Frasier where the writing is so you can appreciate that joke forever. Right. It's not a right. big like a you know it's not it don't. And now I will say this, none of these shows have the heights of comedy that I think Martin does in terms of like, when I think about even Renum Spoons, I laugh at that <laughs> once a week. Like, I think that's, I think, <laughs> I, when I think about Martin wrestling with that thing, when I think about the, the, the CD player, the, CD, <laughs> the, stuffed <Rottweiler>, the <laughs> stuffed Rottweiler. Like he fell like, over, he said, lay. <laughs> he said, lay. And you could see Tommy in the background just... He broke. He broke. He completely broke. And I'm telling you now, people, we are giving... We are giving Martin his flowers because it's not going to get picked. I'm already... I feel like that's what's happening. <laughs> yep. Yep. That's exactly what's happening. Um, I still haven't picked. Uh, I'm going to go with... One, I'm going to go with, with my sleeper. And um, that's going to be the Jamie Foxx show. Okay. Okay. I see what you did. That the show bit. is m- way funnier than people give it credit for. Not only that, the best TV show soundtrack. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Because if I'm not at home, like, those are the real <laughs> songs. Like, I wanted to hear people sing the Jamie Foxx wedding song at their weddings every year. I, I sung it at Phil's wedding. <laughs> <laughs> see? You see? <laughs> you can't take that of like Jamie, he came through. All right. Yeah, for sure. Five. Round five. Last round. Last pick. I'm so happy none of you all picked it. I, I love this show. I know it's show. gonna make me mad. I love this show so much. And I don't I don't think it might have I don't know. Maybe y'all would have, maybe you wouldn't have, but I gotta go scrubs. Oh man. I'm nice. going I'm going scrubs. Great, great choice. But I do have one, one question. Mm-hmm. Is Boy Meets World a black show or a white show? I know it ain't got no black people in it, but black people love. <laughs> <laughs> you know why? It's because the right, like the because I I listen to Pod Meets World. The what's writing that? in that show? Wait, wait, is what's so that? Pod Meets World. It's a it's a 
it's a rewatch podcast with uh Daniel Fisher, Will Will Friedle, and Ryder um, Strong. Ryder yeah. Strong. Who? When did this happen? <laughs> <laughs> it's been uh, it's been on for like. Three Last months, year, three or four months. Nobody told longer me. than that. I think, longer I think than that because they got they're on season two already. So yeah, so it ha- it had to be like August no. or September when it when it started. Nobody told me. <laughs> I'm mad at everybody. I am mad at everybody. Look at I just found it. I'm mad at all y'all. <laughs> I'm mad at everybody in the world. Nobody was hey, now you now now you can you can you can binge it now. Yeah, that's true. You got a lot of episodes yeah, I've been listening, to. I've been listening to it from week to week. You can binge it. That's the best that's the best way to do a podcast, especially one that's good. <laughs> I just I can't believe nobody said this. Like, <laughs> especially if you every black boy had three white girls that he liked that he really couldn't tell nobody about. The Pink Ranger. The Pink Ranger. <laughs> Kelly Kapowski. <laughs> Come on, and to and Topanga, to and, to <laughs> and and if you liked wrestling, Trish Stratus was on your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, yo, I, I got, hey, hey, this is what I got. <laughs> uh, round five, man. Uh, this is it's for me now. He, um, gosh, I'm going between like three different shows. I think I'm gonna go with another '80s sitcom. It's the I as a as a child I used to dress up as Alex P. Keaton. So I'm going with Family Ties. <laughs> Michael J. Fox. Nice. Hey, Michael yep. J. Fox is like he's sneaky, one of the coolest dudes ever. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Every every everybody wanted to be Michael J. Fox in the 80s, man. Yeah. Like back, it, was, it was it was a combination of Back to the Future and Family Ties. Family like, Ties, yeah. He was already cool. On family ties, but like back to the future, just put him in the stratus, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yep. You know how hard that is to accomplish at that height, like, like to be a short, like, how many short, cool dudes are there, really? Like, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> he's like the only one, yeah. <laughs> he has a great sense of humor about it, too. I read his um autobiography, the first one that came out called Lucky mm-hmm. Man. And he talks about when he won his Emmy, I think, hit when he, he got up to the stage and he goes, I feel four feet tall. <laughs> Yo, that's hilarious oh man great pick great pick um well i'm just gonna go ahead and say it it's, it's another family show and that's family matters i knew you was going uh, I, I couldn't i could I, I i couldn't let i couldn't let that go unpicked um the, I, I do I, I i know this might be blasphemy amongst the black community but i do enjoy family matters more than martin i just do <laughs> Mar- oh. family family matters wasn't necessarily as consistent as martin was yeah. but family matters it, 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 it like when so it good. when it yeah. hit it yeah. hit <laughs> and they dealt with the the dark stuff too in a mm-hmm. in, in a really and i'm gonna say this you ready for controversial opinion throwing it What's out up? there from an acting standpoint, not a funny standpoint. From an acting standpoint, Jaleel White is a better character actor than Martin was. I'm just saying. Just Ooh, saying. I think you rustled some feathers. <laughs> I, I will. I, that's my opinion. I think his characters were more distinctly different than Martin's characters, and mm-hmm. they were more grounded than Martin's characters to me. Yeah, Martin. Martin. Martin was he 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 reminded me of of Jim Carrey, yeah, because he's very physical, yeah, and very uh very slapstick and very very expressive. But he uh, like to, to piggyback off of what you said, he wasn't quite as versatile as yeah. um as Jim and, Carrey to me. But the interesting thing though is people don't talk about it, but I think Martin might be one of the most talented cats. Out of them all, as a, as a dramatic actor, a dramatic actor, yep. when you, yeah. When I watch Life, the scene when him and Claude broke up, Claude and Ray yeah. broke up, you get that I, lump of your throat, bro. I was, he was man. When he he was like, I just need a couple more weeks, and he no, like when Martin no. gave that to him, I was like, no, Ray. <laughs> and Martin was at and and a thin line between love and hate is his magnum yeah. that he doesn't get yeah. credit for. 
But we are still giving you your flowers, Martin, because we didn't pick you. But we <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay. And, and I and I just I just want to say this. I, I think that objectively, uh both Martin and Eddie Murphy, their best movie is life. Absolutely. Hands down. It Absolutely. that is a that is Total a perfect package. movie. It's perfect. I just want to I just want to throw that out there. I you will not we agree on that. I've been beating that drum because people talk about Harlem Nights, they talk about coming to America, they talk about yeah. bad boys. Watch life today. Like, let's strip everything away and just watch. If I told anybody else that there was, if I if I transported myself back to 1994 and I said, y'all, in X amount of years, there's going to be a movie with Bernie Mac, Miguel Nunez, Eddie, uh, Baba, uh, Obat Baba Tunde, mm-hmm. Eddie Murphy, <clears throat> Martin Lawrence, like, and I did, and that, and they're going to star in the movie together at the height of their powers. Because keep in mind, that's when Eddie is on Beverly Hills Cop and the clump at Nutty Professor. Right. Yeah, he was he was in the middle of uh and, uh, and Martin Nutty is Professor coming movie, yep. and Martin is coming yeah. off of Def Comedy Jam and and Martin TV show and Bad Boys. Like mm-hmm. if I told you they're gonna do a movie together one day, you with Bernie Mac. With Bernie Mac, you're mm-hmm. gonna be like, Okay. Okay, <laughs> I'm gonna do this quick because I know you gotta go. And I'm not going to call it an honorable mention, but I got to call it my sixth man first off the bench. I got to get it out because they don't get the credit they deserve. My wife and kids. I'll give you that. I'll give you that. My See, for me, my wife and kids was great, but it really fell off in like those last two seasons. Like when it, when it, for me, for me, when it, when it got, when it got to that last season, it became so, it, it became too silly for me. It, but the I, rest of the show is great. And I'll give you that. But you know what I what I will add as a caveat, though? I watch it with my kids. Mm-hmm. And they are over the moon. Like, they think it is the funniest thing. <laughs> like, they die. Like, they walk around. Booyah shaka! Like, they, like, they know. Like, they specifically go. They go to specific episodes. That's how many times they've seen it. Wow. It, it, I mean, it definitely got some memorable episodes. My, I remember my favorite episodes was uh, the ones with Cat Williams uh, playing Bobby Shaw. Bobby Shaw? <laughs> Listen, Cat Williams might be the best guest star. Either Cat Williams or Tommy Davidson. One of those yeah. two are like, <laughs> one of the best stars of all time. <laughs> and David Allen Greer. David Allen Greer's ep- No, Mark Curry's episode of Jamie <laughs> Oh my god! Yo, the driving school. <laughs> Yo, the driving school episode of Jamie Foxx. <laughs> Too much. I gotta watch it. Now I gotta watch it. Yeah, we gotta watch. It. We gotta watch it. Uh, Justin, what's your honorable mention? Um, I think I'm. I'm gonna go with the King of Queens, Kevin James. That's a, that's a that's great. Oh, that's a great one, man. <laughs> it, it came on right after Everybody Loves Raymond. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was a, a I, spinoff. It was almost it? a spinoff, I think. It yeah, was, I don't. His, his character was in season one and two. Oh, okay. They, but they and it's funny because it's true New York fashion. If you live in Lindbrook and I live in Queens, we're not going to be that close. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. It's like being in LA. Like if your friend moved to the valley and you live in the city, your relationship is over. <laughs> when when I was living in California, we lived in North Hollywood, and my wife was wanting to move to Culver City, and I was like, "I'll never see you again." <laughs> I was like, "I'm not driving down there." <laughs> that's, that's it. Dude, I try to explain that to people back home, and they're like, "Well, why don't you just drive over there? It's only it's only ten miles." Like, let me tell you something: ten LA miles, <laughs> right? That's, that's that's different, bro. That's an hour and a half through the yeah. Through the mountains, <laughs> like when we say over the hill and through the woods, we meant that personally. Like, <laughs> okay, you got if you have to get on the four hundred five, you're going through a mountain range. Like right. that's a real yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's a great pick. I'm with mine. I'm gonna go with with a uh, um a newer one as well, and that's Blackish. Blackish is a phenomenal show. Can people see my face? Yeah. <laughs> Had to fix that. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. 
But they honorable mentions. They they don't count no way. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, but so yeah, I still feel bad because we did six and we still didn't roll. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, that's funny. Oh man, yeah, we de- we definitely we definitely we gonna de- get some messages on that one. Yeah, we, <laughs> we definitely. Um, so to wrap this up, uh, our guest Jonathan L. Jackson. He has living single. Everybody loves Raymond. Boy meets world. I'm still very upset about that. <laughs> Girlfriends and scrubs with the honorable mention of my wife and kids. <clears throat> Justin has cheers, Frazier, Seinfeld, growing pains, family times, uh, family ties, and the honorable mention of uh, King of Queens. And I have the Fresh Prince of Bel Air, the Cosby Show, A Different World, the Jamie Foxx Show. Family Matters with an honorable mention of Blackish. Objectively, I think it's safe to say that Justin won this round. I'm actually, I'm he, literally he doing that. it right now. Like, objectively, yeah. Objectively, yeah. He Although, picked three of the uni- of the universally <laughs> accepted greatest of all time. Yeah. Back to back to back. <laughs> <laughs> Objectively speaking, it, I got it. Justin has three. You have two. Mm-hmm. It was hard for me on round four to see who, who, because obviously the first three, objectively speaking, they're Justin. Like it's not close. But mm-hmm. um, I don't know. Boy, Boy Beast World might be close to sign. No, objectively speaking, objectively speaking, Seinfeld is above it. But Jamie Foxx, Growing Pain's Girlfriends. I gave it to Jamie Foxx. I don't know who objectively has the better show. Like, I don't know which one of Between those Jamie Foxx and Girlfriends? And, and, and Growing Pains. Between those and Growing three. Pains? Oh, yeah. I would I say out of the three, Jamie Foxx is at the bottom. You would put Jamie Foxx at the objective bottom? At the objective bottom. I think Girlfriends is, 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 uh, is way better written. Jamie Foxx is way funnier. But yeah. as far as the relationship and the characters and how they how they develop over the show, girlfriends okay. got it. So you going girlfriends or growing pains from an objective place? Ah, uh, I don't know because I I ain't seen growing pains since I was a kid. Yeah, I haven't seen growing Nick, pains Nick at night. Life. If I was watching growing pains, I mean I was up too late. <laughs> <laughs> that means hey, that means you was waiting for BT uncut. I know the truth. <laughs> Hey, don't tell nobody that. <laughs> <laughs> but either way, like he still he won the first three rounds objectively. So he he off top he yeah off top yeah he won um, yeah because I, I think you and I you and I as far as like the all time greats we tied it at two. I I think I got two and a possible with family matters, but yeah we both each got 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 two. You got living single and boy meets world. I got I think you both have arguably three with. Everybody loves Raymond, Boy Meets World, and Scrubs. In my opinion, those are phenomenal. Mm-hmm. And then, Stu, you got Fresh Prince, Cosby Show, and Family Matters, which are also, I think, you know, yeah, phenomenal. Yeah. So I think, yeah. I think we all now, have three really strong. Now choices. we've been talking, we've been talking about people of color all episode, but I think it 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 it, it is uh, Justin. Justin is going to get some emails from the white people. Because he did not pick the office. <laughs> like, that is, like not picking the office is like us not picking Martin. <laughs> yeah. That's true. That is That's true. true. You're in trouble. Like, <laughs> like you could have made it if you had picked parks and rec or something. They might have said, All right, we'll let that like, ride. All right. Or community. You was like, all right, we got you. Yeah, but, yeah. But you did not you pick have, the office. None of those. <laughs> He's got n- the only thing that might save him is that he could say, Oh, I'm just thinking classics. Like I'm thinking like. Amy. Well, and when we when I hear the word sitcom, I do think of the multi camera shot in front of a live audience show, mm-hmm. and so like that's why Scrubs didn't come into my brain, and that's mm-hmm. why you know the office same with the Office and Parks and Rec, they're all single camera shows. Mm-hmm. So those they are sitcoms, but it just I just didn't think about them. But uh, yeah, but yeah, you're right. I probably will get some emails for that one. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good though. We all had great picks, like we said, uh, Justin. Congratulations, you 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 objectively oh, won. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate um, it. But before we get out of here, I want to thank our wonderful guest, Mr. Jonathan L. Jackson, writer, actor, director, producer, singer, you name it. Um, uh, b- before we go, I have one question: yes, theater sir. or on screen? Theater. 
Smith theater. I, I knew you were going to say that. Wait, you, you I knew mean you were to, say which one? Wait, wait. I have to be clear. You mean to perform or to to enjoy? To enjoy. Oh, film, screen, film. Oh, I, oh, okay. You want to know the truth? You want to know a secret? I hate theater. I hate going to see. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! What I meant, no. Okay, so I guess I guess I meant performance. Like like do, like, which oh, one do you it. enjoy experiencing more? Which one do you oh, enjoy theater, doing? Like, more? theater okay. gives me an instant gratification. If I do something funny, they laugh. I feel right. good. Versus like like now, I'm working on a TV show that won't come out until around this time or later next year. Mm -hmm. So by the time it come out and people are are congratulating me, I'll be like. I mean, shoot, that was forever. That was a year ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, that doesn't even feel good anymore. Like, yeah. Right, like, right. And I think, and I think with, with screen, it's too many chefs in the kitchen. Yeah. With theater, it's a more direct product. The playwright mm -hmm. writes it. He sits in a room with the, with the cast and the director. Y'all put that baby on stage. That's it. Mm -hmm. With with TV, film, all of that, there are studios, there are executives, there's the business element, there's all the rewrites. Things. Yeah, yeah. Like you know, sometimes I, I'm in notes meetings these days, and I'm just listening. Like I didn't see that. I don't understand what you don't understand. Like, well, you need to make me understand. Well, you know, <laughs> it's like, well, nobody understands it. You ain't understanding me, and I ain't understanding you. So, what we gonna do? Rewrite it. All right. Uh <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, we're going to go ahead and get out of here. If you are listening, thank you for listening. If you're watching, thank you for watching. Um, if you're on YouTube, please smack that like button and subscribe to the channel. Um, I, I would very much appreciate it. <clears throat> um, also, uh, I will put uh, uh, Mr. Jackson's uh, so various social medias in the description as well as uh, the web series upload. Um, I'm sorry, the web series Upstairs and the short film Upload, which are both great. And you definitely need to check those out. Um, but we are going to go ahead and get out of here once again. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. But in the meantime, we are going to watch some more movies. Have a good night.